Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, and welcome back to today's Daf Hayomi Meseches Chulen Daf Kuftes. We are holding on Kuftes Amad Aleph at the Mishnah, which is three lines from the bottom of the Amid. And with your permission, perhaps we'll join up today's Daf, Daf Kuftes, with uh, the next Daf Kofyud. Uh, due to the shortness of the dapim and the uh, connectivity of the topic here, we're speaking about uh, the uh, the milk inside the udder. And before we begin the Mishnah, we're meant to know that Menhatoiro, the issue of cooking and consuming basar, cooked with chalav, is only applicable to real milk that was milked out of a live animal. But if you have milk discovered inside the udder of an animal post-Shechita, that is not really considered milk Menhatoiro. It's sort of considered part and parcel of its surrounding flesh. It's only also made rabbonon to be cooked with, uh, you know, with, with meat. It's called chalev shchuta, which is only made rabbonon. Now, let's say you have that milk still inside the udder, and you want to cook up the udder and consume it. What do you do now? It says the Mish, hakechal, so the udder, before cooking it, kairoi, he must tear it open, umoytzi as chalavoi, and clean out its milk. So before cooking, you have to cleanse it of its milk, made rabbonon. Suppose he didn't do it. He just cooked it as is, with its milk content. Like Roy, he didn't tear it open. And he cooks it and he eats it. He has not really transgressed an Isra Raisa, nor will he get Malchus. So yeah, Medra Banan, clean it out. But if he, he did it without cleaning it, he has not committed Isra Raisa. On a similar note, another organ which has some um, liquid content will be the heart which has blood, right? Halev. Here as well, Kairoi, he must tear it open, might see a stomach clean out its blood prior to cooking it. Suppose he didn't. He failed to open it and just cooked it as is. Loi Kroi, he didn't tear it open. Einoi Erva Olav, he's not going to be have, have transgressed. And Issa the rice, even if he consumes it as is with its blood content. And the question here is why? I mean, blood is blood. It's also Menat Torah. And Rashi explains, based on the Gemara Mesechas Krisis, that we're speaking about a small-sized heart, one of a oif, of a fowl, in which case the blood within it is less than a kezayis, so although it's asr, because it's asr, but it's not going to trigger malchus, because it's not a kezayis. So we have two, two similar, um, you know, uh, phenomena in the Mishnah. We have the kechal, which has its milk content, meant to, cleaned out, meant to be cleaned out, but the evidence is not over. We have, on the other hand, the... Um, Heart with its blood content, it's meant to clean out. If we cleaned out, but even if he doesn't, he's not going to be getting malchus. Now, let's go back to the kachal for a moment. You meant to clean it out. Okay, he didn't. Cooked it as is. He eats it. There's no malchus. Because, as explained, this isn't really cl- classified as milk, minatur at all. So now the question is can he eat it? I mean, it's after the fact. Fine. He didn't follow instructions. So now he has a cooked udder, which inevitably has some milk content absorbed within the walls. But, you know, it was never really visible. It never really came out. Right? The Gemara Rashi later explains with speaking that it was roasted. Now, when something's roasted, look, whatever comes out stays out. Whatever milk never came out, was always inside, stayed inside, and remains inside. So it never really, it wasn't pirish. It never left and came back. It never really assumed its own identity. Now comes an interesting question. Could you consume it? Lichat chila. turn to We have two versions of Rav. Amar of Zir Amar Rav, in the first version of Rav. Go ahead. You shouldn't have done it. You should have cleaned it out. But once it's done, it's roasted. Okay, it's fine. Whatever's in there is in there. It's not even awesome at the Rabbanon, Rashi says, because it was like Piresh. It never left. You know, we have a similar halacha by blood. You know, the halacha is that um, blood of a human, right, is not awesome in our Torah. But in the Rabbanon it is, provided that it left a person, as opposed to, let's say, a person has a sore in his mouth that's, you know, slightly bleeding. That's okay, because it never really left. It never assumed its own identity. It was still sort of connected with the person. And therefore, it's not even awesome in the Rabbanon. Likewise, perhaps in this case, although he meant to clean out the milk, but if he roasted it as is, and the milk never left. You see, if it was cooked, Rashi explains this later, if it was cooked in a pot, 
inevitably there's an exchange. It's a two-way street. The milk comes out, gets, comes back in during the cooking process. There, certainly it would be also Madura bottom because it already was classified as milk when it left and then went back in, so it's also Madura bottom. But here it never left. Whatever is in there now never left the roasted udder. Amar Abzeira, Amar Eino Ever Olaf, so if he cooks it as is, there's no Malkas, Umutar. And you can go ahead and eat it, Lechat Chila. Ask the Gemara, hold it. Let's take a close look at the verbiage of the Mishnah. Vanan Tanan, the Mishnah says, if he failed to clean it out and he cooked it as is, Eino Ever Olaf. Okay, he hasn't really transgressed. Nisa Dei Raisa, there's no Malkas. Okay, so uh, that much, but it doesn't sound like he can go and eat it. Me Avar Hudeloi Avar, he hasn't transgressed. But it would imply, it would infer that it's usher to eat it. No, but dinu the isur nami leka. Truthfully, there's nothing wrong with eating it now. The uh, the reason for this choice of words was on account of the next halacha in the Mishnah, where in that case it, it really is usher to eat it, even after the fact, because even a little bit of blood is usher. I mean, you don't get malchus, but it's still usher. But dinu truth, truthfully. There's no Isra for eating this roasted udder after the fact. Va'aydi, on account. The Ba'a, the Mishnah Seifa, at the Mishnah intended on proceeding to the next case with the heart, with its blood content, right? The heart is meant to be cleaned out of its blood. Like Kari failed to do that. In over Olav, if he eats it as is, since it's less than a Kazais, he doesn't get Malkas, but of course it's Asur. Hence, the choice of words. Hasam, so in that case, the Hasam may avur lay over. Technically, he has not really transgressed. Is it the Raisa, meaning to the extent that he's going to get Malkus? Ha Isur Ikavit, still Asur. Rashi explains, even a drop of blood is Asur. Rashi says, Chatsi Shir, even a half of a Shir, Asur Minatur. So the choice of wording in the next part of the Mishnah was accurate, was meant to teach us a very specific lesson. I mean, Raisha, on account of that Lashin, the Mishnah chose, you know, matching symmetrical language. That even by the uh, kachal, the roasted udder, ain't over olav. He's not going to be over, uh, you know, if he eats it. But really, it's more than that. You can eat it lechat chilo. Leima masiyale. Perhaps I can now support Rab's halacha from a brisa, where it would seem that the udder is perfectly permitted. Hakachal back to the udder. Koyr oyu moitzis chalavai. Tear it open and take out the milk. Loi kori he failed to do that. Ain't over olav. He's not going to transgress. Likewise, the heart must be cleaned out of its blood. Like Kari failed to do that. Or after he roasts it, Bishlobi I mean roasting, Rashi brings that we find in Dibra Yamim, Vaivashlosa Pesach, that Pesach, which of course is roasted, is regarded as Vaivashlo, described as having been cooked. So we see Lashon Bishl sometimes can mean roast. So in this case as well, so he roasted these items, right? Uh, so he roasted the heart. He uh, tears it open afterwards. And now that he cleaned out the uh, the milk, it's okay. Now let's just stop for a second. Afterwards, isn't it too late? I mean, the blood gets embedded in the um, flesh of the heart. So it actually explains based on the Gemara in Psachim, Shani Leiv, the material that comprises the heart, is Shia. It's different. It's smooth and repellent. It's like Teflon. So it doesn't really absorb the blood contest. Even after it's been processed, you can still get to clean it out of its blood. Now, end of quote. Let's analyze this price. It would seem that only by the heart, Leiv Hudubai Kriya, after it's done, the process, you've got to tear it open and Aval Kachal Hudubai Kriya, but there's no need to do that by the Kachal. Apparently, once it's it's roasted, it's roasted. Leave it alone. That's a right to rob. That it's mutal chatchil. No, says the Gemara. Perhaps just the opposite. Perhaps the brisa just means that the heart has an advantage. That you could tear it open now and clean it up because, as we explained, it's not really going to absorb it right during the you know roasting process. So now you can still clean it out. It's not too late. But perhaps the point is that by the other, it's too late to clean it out. So just the opposite. We thought it's going to be a riot that it's mutal chatchil. Perhaps just the opposite. It's too far gone. It's asher bediyev. So according to the first version of Rav, a roasted udder that was not cleaned out of its milk, although it should have been done, but it wasn't. After the fact, it's mutal chatchil. And the reason that's why she explains is because it's chalav shkuta shalei pirish, chalav of a shkuta, which is only made the rabbanon to begin with. 
And here we have another, another factor that never really left. It was embedded and stayed inside. It never was expressed as chalav. In which case it's mutar l'chadchil. However, Vikud Amri is another version of Amar Abzeir Amar Rav. The uh, roasted udder, Eina Ever Allah. There's no Issa de Raisa for eating it. But also, but Midr you shouldn't eat it because of its milk content. We don't differentiate between whether it left or it stayed inside. It's milk, it's milk. Lema misayele, perhaps we can support this halacha from the Diyuk and Al Mishnah, which was the same Mishnah that we used as a kasha on the first version, and now we're reversing it, we're bringing a raya, because now the table's turn. Now we're saying it's awesome, we have a raya from the Mishnah, which seems to say the same. Lema misayele, ain't ever alav. So in the Mishnah we learned that if he failed to clean it out and he roasted it as is, there's no malchus. Mi avarud lo avar. Okay, there's no malchus. Ha yisur ika. But it sounds like it's asa midrabanan, which supports Rob's point. No, bedinu di yisur namileka. Perhaps the Mishnah does not mean to say it is an isur. Perhaps it's mutl chatchila. Why this choice of words? On account of the seifa, right? Similar to what we said before. Va'aide the bottom is the seifa. Since the Mishnah intended on proceeding to the case of the heart, halev, kairo, yomotzi has dumb, it must be cleaned out of its blood prior to processing. Loi kara, he failed to clean it out. Eina ever alav. Even eats, he doesn't get malchus because less than a shear. Right? The asam he avod loi avar. So in that case, certainly, although there's no malchus, but ha isur ika, certainly it's asur because less than a shear of forbidden material. So since the Mishnah was intending on using that language there. Tana, I mean, Reisha, likewise, the Mishnah applied the similar verbiology to the Reisha regarding the roasted udder. Ain't over, Allah, he's not over, but perhaps it's even with the you have no right from here. Tashma, it comes another right. There's going to be a kasha from that b'risa. Ha-kechal, koiroi, amaiti, as chalavoi. The kechal must be teared and cleaned of its, the torn and cleaned of its, of its milk. Loi kari, failed to do that. Ain't over, Allah, he hasn't transgressed Isidai rice. Next, Halev, the heart, Koiroi, Moitzis Dama, he must rip it open and extract its blood. Loi Koiroi failed to do that. Koiroi Lachabishulai, Umutar, even after roasting, he can cleanse it and it's okay. Stop. End of rice. It sounds like Lev Hudubai Kriya. That only with respect to the uh, blood in the heart, that has to be cleansed even after roasting. Aval Kachalabai Kriya, but by the other, don't bother. That's a kasha. And this version of Rav who says you can't eat it even now, even after the fact. Says Igmar, no, who says? That is what the Bryson means. Dilma, perhaps. Levu de sagile bikriya. Avakhali sagile bikriya. Just the opposite. By the heart, due to the fact that it's repellent, material is non absorbent, you can now go ahead and clean it out, even after it's roast. But by uh, the other, uh, it's too late. Le sagile bikriya, you can't do it. So, bottom line, we have a machlekis regarding a roasted udder which he did not clean out prior to roasting. First Lashon of Rav is, it's mutl l'chadchila, because it's chal of shechuta, which is mitra which never left the, the organ. According to the second Lashon, it's also mitra banana. Tanya, we have a b'raisa, kalishin l'kam and rab, in support of the first Lashon of Rav, that it's mutl l'chadchila. Kechal shibish lebechalove. Ara was roasted with its milk content. Mutter. Okay? So it's okay, uh, but the evidence is okay. However, a keva, oh, now we shift to a little bit of a different variation of this halach. We have a keva, that's the fourth stomach of the animal. Shebish lebechalava. So we have a young calf nursing from its mother. And after shechita, you uh, discover the keva full of milk, you know, from its nursing. Shebish lebechalava, which was cooked with its milk content. In this case, it's asr, asr menat Torah. I mean, you would ask, what's the difference? The udder with its milk is okay, but the cable with its milk is also. Uma hefersh benzel is that what's the difference between this and that? Says the more very simple. Ze konos b'meyav, v'ze en konos b'meyav. In contrast to the udder, which is en konos b'meyav, it's not collected in its stomach, which means to say it's it's still embedded in the you know the milk producing you know uh, cells or whatever, right? It's it's um, a conduit. It's not it's not. Uh, milk that had been milked off an animal and is now found inside the next animal. Zekonus Bameyav by the nursing calf. He milked live milk off the live mother. And then it was Konus Bameyav collected in its stomach. That is milkman Hatoira. 
right? So then when it's cooked together with its stomach, it's basar b'chala, but v'zeh in konas you have the milk inside the udder. It doesn't have that. It wasn't a nurse from a live animal and then collected in the stomach of the, of the calf. No, it's still it's in, in its original uh, production facility. So in this case, at most, it's only chal of shchuta and uh, certainly when it uh, and I've even left the udder and it was roasted as is midrabonon, even midrabonon, you can eat it l'chatechil. Ketzat kore. So back to the Mishnah which instructs us to tear open the udder. How do you do that? Amar of Yehuda, to what extent do you have to open it? Kore is just a back and forth, like an X. Totally tear it open. Betoche bekoisl, and then squeeze it against the wall, against the hot surface, and actually extract all the uh, the milk prior to roasting it. Amalei Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Lazar turned to his helper, Lashamei. He says, Kral livana echel. Just, you know, give it a tear, and then you'll, you know, you'll serve it to me. Mike Mashman, what's his point? Masnisani, we have it in the Mishnah. Why is he telling him over a Mishnah? I mean, uh, we're assuming that his uh, Shamas was a learned fellow, right? And uh, why do you have to tell him? Masnisani, okay, Mashman, his point was to say like this that since you're merely roasting it for me, you're not cooking it, you don't need such an extensive cleansing process like the Mishnah. Hakamashmalon, Deloy Ba'inon Shesi Ve'erev, Vitoche Bekoisel. That he actually was teaching that the Mishnah never meant uh, an extensive cleansing process. You don't need shesiv back and forth and squishing it against the wall. That is only regarding Bishal. Shravida was talking about Bishal, according to Rabbi Lazar's understanding. When you cook it, it has to be really cleansed because when you cook it, there's an exchange of flavor and liquid going both ways, a two way street. So there has to be fully clean. Because once it leaves and comes back in, that's a problem. But when you're doing tzliya, when you're merely roasting it, just open it up a bit so that the roasting process will extract and expel whatever it is, and uh, then we're, uh, you know, we're, we're clean of any milk, free of any milk. Amrle Yalsa. Here comes an interesting discussion. Yalsa, who was the wife of Rav Nachman, she was apparently a very learned person, and she turned to Rav Nachman. She says, you know, I have an interesting observation. The Torah sets up many parallels, many matching pairs. You have an item which is forbidden, right? And correspondingly, the Torah says, look, I'm not going to stretch it all the way. I'm going to give you an allowance to have a little uh, a sampling, a taste of something similar to that forbidden item. So the Torah doesn't just lock the door all the way, lock you out of all these things. The Torah gives you an allowance to have something similar, to satiate your, uh, you know, uh, your, your taste, your curiosity, <laughs> right? The Gemara actually says, Rashi brings it by the, uh, you know, Kiseitze, by the Eshe Sifas Toyar. Torah is sensitive to the fact that we have a very strong opposing force of desire, right? And, 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 and interest in things which are not necessarily commendable. So Torah allows us something which uh, gives us sort of a, an opening a window into the experience, which is really Asr. And we find that throughout the Torah. She gives a whole rundown, a whole printout. Listen to this. Look, call the Asr on Rahmana. All the things that are Asr in the Torah, sure, on cover say, the Torah provided us with a corresponding phenomena, which is, a, a, you know, experience, which is very similar, which is Mutter. Sure, on cover say. For instance, Asalan Dhamma, we can't eat blood. Shalan Kabda, but Torah allows us to have uh, liver, which is essentially congealed blood. So you get a taste of blood. It's a permitted version of blood. Dam Nida, right? One cannot approach a, a woman while she's in Nida. Dam Toya. Right? Correspondingly, we have the uh, period when she's Toya, when she has a uh, Dam of Tahara, Rashi says, after birth, or Bisulin, which is a similar experience, but that's Mutter. We have Chelev, forbidden fat of a behema. Then we have seemingly similar fat, which is permitted. Chelev of a is okay. We have the famous Chazir, which we don't, we don't eat. 
But then we have some material which tastes like chazer, which is mutter. Moicho, the uh, brain material of the shibut, a certain fish, which tastes very similar to chazer. So if you're interested, go have that, uh, go have a taste. Givrusa, which Rashi learns is if tamay, an unkosher bird. If you're curious to what it tastes like, listen to the cover, go have yourself a, a tongue of a fish. Ish is ish, right? The married woman is forbidden for us. But there's a similar type of uh, phenomenon, which is Grusha Bachai Bala, divorcee during, her li- uh, during the lifetime of her husband, which is very similar to Eshes Ish. And she's Mutter, you can marry her. We have Eshes Ach, right? A sister in law, the wife of a brother who is forbidden. But we have Yivama, right? The Yivama is, is, is permitted. Kusis, I may not approach a non Jewish woman, but if a tire is okay, right? Captured during wartime. So there is a parallel system throughout the Torah. We have something which is Asr, correspondingly something which is very similar, which is Mutter. Now, what about Basar B'chala? Very curious. I'd like to have a sampling of Basar B'chala of any permitted version. But in Lamechal Bistro B'chala, I'd like to have Basar B'chala. Can you uh, work it out for me? Amul Rav Nachman Tabachi, so Rav Nachman turned to his, um, his chefs. He says, yeah, Zavikula roast for her a uh, kachli. <laughs> An udder, right? So, so the uh, Zviku means like stick it into the spit, roast her, uh, roast her uh, with its milk. Now she'll get a taste of basa b'chalav in a permitted version. Says the Gemara, hold it. Are you allowed to do that without cleaning out the milk? Now we have in the Mishnah which says kairo, you have to tear it open, take out the milk. What do you mean? Haul kadeira. Rav Nachman had a wholly different uh, approach to the uh, to the circuit. He learns that in the Mishnah. Who's speaking that it's being cooked in a kader in a pot? Then you have to clean it out. So he takes it to the other extreme. He says that by chalav shchuta, inside it utter, if you're merely going to roast it, so you're not going to have the you know the outer and in transfer. Whatever stays in is always going to be there permanently. Whatever. That's muta lechat So we have now three shitas about roasting the uh, the utter with its milk content. Kuntar of nachman muta lechat According to Rav's first version, it's not mutal chatchilo, but the evidence it's mutal to eat it. According to the second version, it's also even to eat it, but the evidence. Okay, in any case, that's the way he learns it. Ask the Gemara about Hal Katani Shabishloi. We have that Bryce, if you recall, which spoke about uh, the udder that was roasted. And Rashi explains that Bishloi certainly means roasted because it would be uh, Bishloi literally cooked, it would be also even with the evidence because the milk left and came back in. So Bishloi certainly over here means roasting as well. And the uh, the Bryce seems to indicate that it's only good after the fact. Okay, it was done, it was done. The Eved in, if it was roasted, fine, you eat it. But not L'Chathchila, law, you can't do that. No, Rav Nachman will learn who I did not feel L'Chathchila. It's even allowed initially. I did the Kabayim Nusna Seifa. It's just on account of the next halacha there, which says, Keva, we turn to the next Amit, Keva, Shabishla, Bechalva. Stomach. That was cooked with its milk content, Asura. In this case, it's Asur. In this case, it's us even with the Yevet, right? Because it's real milk. I Minatoya mean, was nursed off a live animal, now it's sitting in the next animal's stomach. So that's us even after the fact. And Rishi Shabish, likewise, in the case of the other, the price of sites is sort of a Bidyevid form of, of presenting the halacha, uh, you know, a past tense. But really, it's muta even to go ahead and do it initially. Kisala Grabi Elazar. When Rabbi Lazar, Travel up to Eretz Yisro. Ashkechel is iri. He meets up with the Amora. Ziri. Amorle says, you know, back in Bavel, we know that Rav originally lived in Eretz Yisro and learned with Rav Chia, his uncle. And then he moved over to Bavel. So I'm just curious. You know, there's a there's a, a version of Rav. He, you know, he was uh, aware of the second version of Rav that. Uh, the, the roasted udder is usher, even after the fact. Rabban, you can't eat it. He's wondering where Rav got it from. Who taught Rav this halacha? Where's the source? Amr lay, so he asked him, Ika Tan, is there any uh, scholar that's Nail Rav Kachal, which would have taught Rav this halacha of Kachal? I'm, I'm just curious where the source is. That it's usher, even after. Okay, so he, Achvayi uh, Rav Yitzchak, he showed him over the Rav Yitzchak bar Abu Dimi. And he approached him with the same question. Amalei says, no, don't blame it on me. I never taught him this halacha of kachal. No, it's, that's not coming from me. I'll tell you where Rav is coming from. I'll explain it to you. Why he was so strict. 
The Rav Bika Motza, Rav discovered a Bika, an open, breached uh, piece of property, open field. It's an expression. He noticed, uh, he, he uh, encountered a community which were not being careful, which were being lax. So he came down hard on them so that they take it more seriously. And he was machmer even on uh, something which perhaps typically would not be machmer on, just to sort of teach them a lesson and you know, get them on track. The Rav Bika, Motzav, Goda Bagoda, he found an open breach area and he uh, erected a fence around it. That explains why Rav was so strict in this matter. What was the story? The Rav Ikla, Rav uh, visited this town of Tatlavush, okay? Shama. And while there, he overhears the two women speaking to each other and discussing recipes. Shama, he hears this woman, the Kamal Chaverta, speaking to her friend. Okay, uh, making supper tonight. Uh, can you give me some uh, tips? River the bistro. I got a quarter, you know, a quarter pound, a quarter um, liter of 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 of, uh, of meat. How much milk do you need to get it really nice and juicy? Kama chalava boil of shuli. How much milk do you need, you know, to cook it up properly? Ooh, Rob heard that. He was flabbergasted. Boss of a chal of day rice. What's going on in this place? Omar, he says, like Miri, the Basa Bachal of Asr. Nobody here knows that Basa Bachal of Asr. Yaakov, he said, okay, I gotta stick around here and teach them a thing or two. He taught them the basics and he was even machmer on them. Sometimes, you know, you have to go to the other extreme to balance it out, to get them, you know, cognizant and serious about it. Yaakov, the Asr, Lukachli, even disallowed the roasting of the, the Kachal. Um, and, you know, he went to the extreme that even if it was roasted uh, with the chal of shchut, which is the rabbana, it would be asr. This way, they, you know, keeps them a step ahead of the game. Continues the Gemara. Rav Kahana, in fact, mas He had this version of the story like we had. Rabbi Yesir, Rabbi Abba, he had a different version of this uh, interaction, of this conversation. Mas he presented like this. That... When Rav Yitzhak Bar Avdimi was confronted, you know, and asked about, you know, uh, Rav's source, he says, look, I want to explain to you, I want to elaborate, I want to clarify what happened. He says, In reality, I, I, yeah, I gave Rav that information, but it was a different thing. I told him about a kechal shel menika, an udder of a, of a cow that's nursing her calf, which is full of milk. In that case, yeah, you have to uh, tear it open and clean it out. But he mistakenly um, thought it refers to every udder. Right? But in reality, an ordinary udder doesn't even have to be torn to begin with. Okay? When we pull Pulish Rabbi Chia, Shana Lei Kechal Stam. So what happened was, Rashi explains, Rav learned by his uncle Rabbi Chia, who's Mephopal, very deep and sharp, and he, he thought that his uh, Talmidim are on the same level of, of depth and analysis and when he taught them the halachi, he, he failed to sort of clarify that he meant only the uh, nursing udder. So when he taught it to them, Rav understood, misunderstood and misapplied it to an ordinary udder as well, which in reality of had did not have a mind. And he applied the same strictness to an ordinary udder. But the actual halacha is, no, that only by the nursing order are we so machmer. But otherwise, you don't even have to tear it open. Because, uh, you know, whatever it has in there is not significant and, and, you know. So that explains why Rav was so machmer. But in reality, it, it would only have been applied, should have been applied only to this specific, unique type of situation. Continues the Gemara. Ravan Rav Yitzchak Bar Yisuf. What happened to them? Iklu lebeir Rav Papi. So they came. Uh, they paid a visit to Rav Papi's uh, home. I shall come out of Shiloh to Kham. They served them a dish of of, of an otter, a cooked otter. Play a good uh, dinner. Rav Yitzchak Bar Yisuf. Achal he ate. Ravan no. Lo yachid want to eat. I guess he was able to tell that it wasn't uh, you know cleaned out. Amar Abayi Sabayi. Responded, he says, Ravan, Tichla, Ravan lost his children, so it was a, a sad reference to Ravan. Ravan, poor Ravan, am I loy achal? Why did why why did he eat the meat? It was served by a righteous woman, 
who certainly had her uh, traditions worked out. She knew exactly what's what, what's what. Michti Dvisud Rapapi. Who's the wife of Rapapi? She was the daughter of a great man, Barati, the daughter of Darbitzak Navchavoy. No, Rabitzak Navcha, her father was a great man, a Mari Duv Dahava. Rashi says, Mari Duv Dahava means Zoy Ramasam Tevim, very uh, conscientious, very meticulous, a great Sadiq. Ilab de Shmilam Binasha. If not for the fact that she heard it from, you know, back home, that she got this from her family, from her father's house, Leva Abda, certainly she would not have served it this way. So you can be sure that if she served it to you, it was uh, perfectly fine. Right, so perhaps Tesa says um, he thought it was a nursing utter in reality it wasn't so it's not an issue now Besura so in a practical sense how did they uh, conduct themselves in Sura Besura lo yachli kachli they would refrain from eating the cooked udder at all at all even roasted even cleaned open it was a a stringency that they adopted they wouldn't touch the kachal Lest you know it come to complications. But on the other hand, the other town, Achli Kachli, they would eat the Kachal. Right? As per the Allahs and the Mishnah, clean it open, right? No problem. Now, what happened? Rami Bar Tamri, that was his name, the Hu, he had another name. He's also called Rami Bar Dukuli. And he hailed from Mipum Badisa, that was his hometown. Ikhul is Surah, now he's in Surah. It's Arabian Kippur. Gotta prepare for the fast, gotta eat. Now the locals, right, would not eat the khal, right? So they separated their khals from their animals, shadinu, and you know, tossed them out. What did he do? He went, out, he went around collecting them. He had a free meal. Azali, Unaktini went around, gathered them together. Achlinu, he ate them. Okay, he had a free meal for him, Kippur, Arim Kippur. Because he came from from Pumpadisa, where it was permitted. Okay, so the uh, locals noticed him, they were flabbergasted. I saw the committee of Chizda, they into Chizda. To call him to task, what are you doing? Eating forbidden materials. Armalais, he says to Nu, am I Tavid Why would you eat it? Why, why are you doing that? Armalais says, what do you mean? Where I come from, it's okay. I come from Yudas town, the Achel, he would eat, so it's good for him, it's good for me. Armalais, he turns to me, he says, but what about the adhering to the local practices? For last night, do you not uh, subscribe to the halacha that we had back in Masechus Psachim? When a person comes from one town um, and relocates to another, he adopts the, stri- the strictnesses, the stringencies of the uh, local, uh, you know, uh, customs. No, it's an all of chumri amakam shiatzim misham. We apply the chumras of the um, of his hometown. Likewise, the chumras of the local uh, residents. So if you come from a place where they're machmer, even though now you're in a different place, you have to still adhere to your old strictnesses, and vice versa, you got to uh, stick to the local custom. Normally he says, I ate them outside the tchum. I took them with me outside the, you know, 2000 Amma. In which case, I'm not bound, there's no machlekes, I'm not bound to the local practice. Okay, fine. It's good an answer. So he interrogated him further. What did you roast them with? What did you find firewood out in the open? I found these uh, gray pits from the you know, wine press, which were sitting around. I used them as firewood. So he says, well, maybe it's Yainessa. Maybe it's from Geisha wine. It's from forbidden material. Amalai says, ah, they're old. They were really dried up. A year old. It was after 12 months. And Rashi brings the Gemara with the Zara. Once it's so fully dry, bone dry after 12 months, it no longer has any yai uh, you know, moisture, and nesach residue in them, it's okay. She says, hold it, but, but who says you could just take it from the street? Vidumma the Gezel Havim, maybe it's Gezel, you're stealing, maybe it belongs to somebody. Amalai says, I can tell, it was sitting there for ages, Yush Bailam Havo was certainly relinquished by its owner. How do I know the Katchabuch Buchilfi was growing, they were growing uh, moss or whatever. So I know it was sitting there forever, it was ownerless. Okay. He continued on. He sees that he's not wearing tefillin. And to them it was, uh, by them it was, you know, a full day thing, wearing tefillin all day. He's not wearing tefillin. 
I guess he was concerned that others may learn from him, so he, you know, he was just challenging him item by item to uh, you know uh, get to the bottom of it. Amrle he says, my time in the man chastil. What's what's with the tefillin today? Amrle he says, choy li ma'ainu. He says, uh, you know, uh, something with my stomach. I'm not uh, able to wear tefillin today. But Rabbi the Rabbi the teaches us choy li ma'ain. A person has a stomach ailment. Part of not tefillin. He's exempt from tefillin. Rashi says because it would require constant, you know, off and on. So. Okay, now to the tzitzis. Finish with it. Fill on to the tzitzis. He sees he have a karami chut. He has no strings on his uh, garment. There's no tzitzis. He says, what's going on? Amalei, my time is less lachuti. What's with the uh, strings? Amalei says, it's not my bag. It's a borrowed garment, which is exempt. The Pasuk says, kisus has to belong to you, right? From Rabbi Yudah, we turn to the base. Talashula. If one borrows a garment, kol shleishem yem tur ben at For the first 30 days, it's exempt from tzitzis. I taste the springs, actually, it's always a pottery, even after 30 days, but with the Rabbana, it looks like it's yours, you're wearing it for so long, it must be yours. So it appears like, so with the Rabbana, after th- but now it's, uh, it's just a day or two that I'm wearing it, and, you know. Okay, as he's still standing there, the Hachi, as this was going on, I saw Logavar, suddenly they uh, noticed this fellow being pulled into the basin there, they were dragging this man, the Loi have a moiker, what was his offense? He, um, wasn't very careful with uh, honor- honoring his parents, he, uh, Neglected the mitzvah of kibud avim. The lehava meiker avov imei wasn't respectful to his parents. Kavsu, they tied him up. They bound him down. They're about to give him malchus. Now Rashi explains, unlike the regular thirty-nine lashes, which is the malchus from Torah given as a punishment after one transgresses a mitzvah slays say Here it's a different system. This was not for the sake of punishment, rather for enforcement. Rashi brings Gemara that uh, the bezin. Uh, is, is, is obligated to force people to do mitzvahs. You see a person on sukkah is not sitting in a sukkah, is not shaking lul of you. Start whipping him. Let's go until you do it. And it's limitless. There's no lum, there's no number, there's no defined amount of So anyways, this fellow was not being Mikhaim Kibudav and they were about to give him Malkus. Omalus, so this uh, guest, Rami Bar uh, Tamri, calls out, he says, Well hold it, hold it. What's going on? Leave him alone, you're not allowed to do that. Why? Although by lulav, yeah, by sukkah, yeah, but not kibud avayim. The son you have a brisa. Kol mitzvah sasei, shemat and schor betzida. You have a mitzvah sasei, which, where the Torah actually expresses schar, describes its reward in this world, next to the mitzvah. Aside from the eternal reward, the Torah gives us schar in this world as well, such as, Rashi says, such as, such as, long life, right? So what the Torah is telling you is, look, although by a regular mitzvah, I say, Bezdin has the obligation to force him, by pain of Malchus, but not by this uh, mitzvah. Here, look, the punishment is, if you fail to do this mitzvah, you're... Uh, forfeiting your reward in this world. That's your punishment. And that's it. So it ends there. You can't apply another method of enforcement. The sign of Chalmitz says, Shemat and Schorah Betzida, a mitzvah say which has uh, its reward described next to it, such as, Kibbut Aveim, Ein Bezin Shalomat, the Bezin down here in this world, cannot proceed, Musar and Aleah are not uh, obligated to enforce it. So basically, this fellow was off the hook. Amalei Surah Chizda was very impressed with this guest. He says, wow, you, you're really uh, on, top of the, on top of your game. Amalei Chazin of the Kharifas too, by uh, taking note of your uh, extreme sharpness. Wow. Amalei says, well, you ain't seen nothing yet. If only you, uh, you would come to the Rabbi Huda's town, back in Pomedisa, when I'm back home, I'll show you my sharpness. Now the uh, some Sefer brings it, of course, it would seem, right? This is not something that a person, Tamad Chacham, you know, is typically not boastful, is not haughty. So why was he expressing himself this way? Oh, if you would only know how sharp I really, really am. So interesting. Listen to this beautiful piece that some Sefer brings from his Rebbe, Rav Nassim Adler Zatzal. He says like this: It is known that a person only um, achieves, only arrives at his ultimate, maximizes his his intellectual abilities when he disengages, when he actually. Um, disengage it, detaches from his Rebbe and goes out on his own and spreads his wings. As long as he's still under his Rebbe's tutelage, 
it's sort of suppressed, right? He's still, you know, sort of receiving. He's not really developing, developing himself as he should be. Now, you may recall a minute ago, at the beginning of this uh, discussion, at this sort of debate, right? He says, what are you doing eating the uh, kachal, contrary to local custom? He says, well, uh, you know, I come from the other place, and I'm out of the tchum, and etc., etc. Basically, I'm just passing by, right? It's just a temporary... I didn't really take up residence in this place. So now, when he noticed how sharp he was, he said, hold it. You claim that you're still uh, connected to your Rebbe back in Pompadissa. You're still a resident of Pompadissa. No, I, it seems from your level of intellectual prowess that you're really a local. You're so sharp. You're, you're disengaged from your Rebbe. You're on your own. That's the only way to explain your extreme sharpness and your high level of intellect. So really... You're a local. And you can't eat khal. <laughs> you living here? So he says, no, no, no. You ain't seen nothing yet. You come back to Fumadisa, I'll show you how far, how much further I can go. I have a lot to learn. I plan on going back. I'm just passing through. I'm still back by the Rebbe. I'm developing myself further. My, my capacity is so much greater than this. I still got so much more to learn and to develop myself. In which case, incorrect. I'm not a local resident. I'm really a, still a Pompadisa resident. In which case, it uh, explains why, it justifies why I was able to eat Tikkacha. Very interesting. Beautiful Pshat in the Gemara. Okay, perhaps we'll leave the rest for tomorrow. That's a whole new topic about uh, cooking, roasting the liver. We'll get to that by the Shem tomorrow. Okay, so in a nutshell, we had the Allah of Tikkacha. And again, in Torah, only milk that was milked of a live animal is considered true milk, which is also to be mixed with meat. The Rabbani, even a chalav shchut, a chalav discovered within a slaughtered animal, is also considered chalav. Now, the udder is sort of a tricky thing because, you know, the milk within it, if it's roasted, you know, as is, it's just going to stay there. It never, it's never going to leave. So if it leaves and comes back, then you have a problem. That's certainly also with the But if it's being roasted as is, whatever leaves, leaves, whatever stays, stays permanently. So that was the big shail in the Gemara. According to Rav Nachman's Mutal Chathil, without even cleaning it out. According to the other sheet, you have to clean it out. Um, but but the evidence, if it wasn't cleaned out, just roasted as is, Rav says Mutter, according to the second lotion, is Asr. And the more later explains, this is according to the explanation here, that it only applies to the... Um, to the... Uh, Nika, the uh, you know the uh, the mother uh, cow, which is you know in the nursing process, so she has lots of milk in there, um, and um, yeah. Otherwise, according to one shot, the you don't even have to attend to the udder, and even you know clear it open, as per the story with the wife of Rab, Rab Puppy, right? An interesting <laughs> conversation between uh, the Alsa of Nachman. We found this sort of uh, matching system, Asra Mutter. And she was curious about Basar B'cholov, and he, uh, he allowed her, he allowed her a sample of Basar B'cholov, as close as you get to the original, by roasting up that kachal with its uh, little content. We had uh, another interesting story towards the end of uh, the person who visited the uh, surah, and he allowed himself the, uh, the kachal, he wasn't wearing tefillin, he wasn't wearing tzitzis, and ultimately he had a good explanation for everything, satisfied with Chizda, who was actually very impressed with his harifas. Okay, thanks for joining. All the best to you. Psyrus Tavis and Atzlachar.